This video has come about because of comments on my previous video about this, the uh, TP4056 module that actually used four of the ICs on the same module to supply up to three amps into lithium ion batteries. And a number of people suggested various different modules instead of this one uh, because we found out it wasn't brilliant. So over the last week I've been testing various different modules and this video is a quick summary of how each of them fared. Now in each and every case I've been using this USB power monitor and USB load um, to both discharge the battery between tests and monitor those tests on each of the different modules. Now this one's a bit different to all my other USB loads and charger doctors. Uh, this one has no screen on it at all. It doesn't say anything. It's made by a company called ZKE. And uh, I've written on the bottom here, this one will take a maximum of 13.5 volts and 4 amps or 25 watts, uh, whichever is soonest. And you can see it's uh, marked EBD USB. I don't know quite what that refers to. But on the back here is a micro USB connector and you connect it to your PC, it creates a COM port and then there's a piece of software. And here's a screen grab of the software here. I was discharging some 18650s here so we started off at 4.2 volts or thereabouts, quickly dropped under load of 1 amp and the voltage came down until it got to, well, 3 volts here and then the uh, test was complete. So as we can see on the right it was in constant current mode, discharging at 1 amp, cutoff voltage was 3 volts like I've just mentioned and you can put a timer on here if you want and this battery took 1 hour 53 minutes to discharge to 3 volts and it had a total of 1891 milliamp hours within it which is uh, 6620 milliwatt hours. Now this software is quite difficult to find in English. Most of the eBay auctions link to a Chinese version. However Gadget Addict on his YouTube channel found the English version and I'll link to a post on his blog below where you can find this English version of the software. Now one of the issues with this device is it's USB only and uh, we weren't dealing with USB devices so uh, I had to make some adapters here, USB uh, plugs and sockets with crocodile clips on. I've kept the wires reasonably short and they're a decent gauge to uh, ensure that we can carry the current that is required. And just to mention that these are the lithium ion cells I've been charging and discharging. They're still connected together with the original tabbing wire when they were taken out of a laptop battery. They're LG cells and uh, between the two of them they have a capacity of 2977 milliamp hours uh, drained at 500 milliamps. Before we look at some of those results let's think about what we should be seeing. Well we've seen this particular graph in my videos before and it's here on the TP4056 datasheet. And I think this graph is generally seen as an almost perfect lithium ion charge cycle. So there is a very small pre-charge here to ensure that the cell is going to accept some charge but I think that's if the voltage is particularly low and then we quickly go into constant current mode where we deliver, in this case, 1000 milliamps into the battery at a constant current while the voltage rises up and approaches 4.2 volts. Shortly before we get to 4.2 volts, the current will start to drop away and we're in constant voltage mode. We hit 4.2 volts, the current drops away until it gets to about 10% of the initial current going in and at which point the charging cycle should finish and uh, the current should drop off entirely. But is that what we're going to see with all these four modules? So without further ado let's look at the TP4056 multi-chip module here on the left hand side and I'm afraid to say straight away we can see some clear differences in the graph from the data sheet. The voltage here in red has increased up to this point here which is about 4.2 volts 
but that current fell away very very quickly well before we got to 4.1, 4.15 or 4.2 volts. In fact the current had dropped to almost half of the initial current before we got to 4.1 volts here where the two lines happened to cross over. One of the most interesting things I think about this graph is you can see when the different 4056 ICs actually finish their charge. We've got a point here where the current drops away slightly and the voltage does as well. One here where the voltage drops and the current and in fact I've missed one there so we've got uh, one, two, three and then eventually the fourth one quits later on. Now I say later on because actually this charge continued for quite a bit longer than this graph shows. So it seems there is a slight issue with this particular device, or perhaps it's the software, but it does seem to quit at 300 milliamps. Uh, certainly when it's been uh, monitoring over 2 amps here, it seems to quit at 250 or 300 milliamps. So unfortunately, we don't get to see the very end of the charge. But we do get to see that this particular module is not acting in the way that the datasheet says it should. Now one of the things I noticed about this particular module was the TP4056s got very hot. And that's because these devices are linear. They're not terribly efficient and they have to uh, drop the voltage from 5 volts to 4.2 or lower and that creates heat. So given that this next module is switch mode you would hope it will be a lot more efficient and produce a lot less heat. This is the LI4001 and the little 8 pin I see there is the uh, LI4001 itself. There's also a diode on here, a small capacitor, a couple more capacitors over here, a resistor and an inductor. And uh, the inductor and the diode indicate that this is indeed switch mode. And we can see the charging graph and if we forget these anomalies just for the moment we can see that this was fairly constant as the voltage rose up to well 4.175 volts there and then dropped away so this looks pretty impressive and uh, we got up to 4.2 volts but according to my meter here we actually got above 4.2 volts uh, before the charge quit at some point after this magical 300 milliamp value. But what are these funny readings here at the beginning of the charge? Well, I noticed that both the IC, the diode and the inductor were getting incredibly hot. This module is incredibly small and those few components are tightly packed into a very small space. Now my theory is that this has got some thermal protection in and it was actually reducing the current as the temperature rose and allowing the current to increase again as that temperature dropped. And we can see that in both the current and the voltage of the cell. So although this delivered the 2 amps of current it suggests in the eBay auction, uh, it did seem to slightly overcharge my cell and you need to be wary about just how hot this thing gets. So next up is the TP5000 and to be honest I was really impressed with this particular module. As you can see we've got a constant current phase here which is just under the 2 amps advertised. That current started dropping away as soon as we reached 4.1 volts here and dropped away reasonably as the uh, voltage of the cells got up to and approached that 4.2 volt level. Again, sadly, the software stopped recording results at 300 milliamps. However, this module did continue afterwards and happily cut its charge at 4.2 volts. Now, this little module has a trick up its sleeve. Not only can it charge lithium-ion batteries, but it can also charge lithium-ion phosphate batteries. There's a little jumper here, and when it's bridged, like I have it now, it does lithium-ion, and when that's open... It does lithium phosphate. So these seem like very useful modules indeed. Now the last thing to mention about the TP5000 is again it is switch mode. You can see the inductor and the diode there and it did get quite warm but this module comes with a small heatsink. 
on the back of the IC. Presumably there's some uh, vias through there so to carry the heat away and that seemed to do a really good job of keeping the heat down on this side of the module. And here we've come to the last module under test today and it's the TP5100. Now what's the difference between the TP5000 and the TP5100 Adam? Well the TP5000 could do lithium iron and lithium phosphate batteries whereas the TP5100 only does lithium iron but it can do either one cell or two cells in series. So it will charge up to 4.2 volts or 8.4 volts. Again, depending on whether you've bridged this jumper here, which is marked quite handily on this module as set. And when that connection is open, as it is now, it does a single battery. And when it's closed, it does two batteries in series. Although the TP5100 is obviously quite closely related to the TP5000, the results that I've got are quite different. The current drops away almost immediately, not terribly quickly, but it does, and in fact it only ever started at 1.6 amps rather than the full 2 amps as sold. But this one actually does show it completing, it did quit before that 300 milliamps final charge, so actually that's a lot less than 10% isn't it? So a slightly disappointing result there for me, but this is a very useful module, especially if you need something that will charge two lithium cells in series. So that concludes this brief test, and my favourite is the TP5000 module. It's switch mode, so it's more efficient. It's got a heat sink on it to keep it nice and cool. The LI4001 could have been quite good, but it got too hot and that caused some issues in the charging cycle. The TP5100, well, the graph's just not as convincing for me. And originally, I bought the worst of the bunch. This TP4056 module with multiple ICs on it, well, it's a bit rubbish. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you have, give me a thumbs up, subscribe down below, comment if you can. And I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.